Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is additional math operations involving complex numbers. Our objective is to examine operations involving complex numbers, necessitating intermediary conversion, isolating individual components of a given complex number, and determining individual components of a given complex number, only given partial information. This lecture is predicated on the assumption that viewers watch both the complex numbers rectangular to polar conversion and complex numbers polar to rectangular conversion lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. If you recall in the aforementioned lectures, we learned to convert a complex number using rectangular format characterized by a pair of numbers, a real horizontal x component, plus or minus an imaginary vertical y component, times j, to an equivalent polar format, also characterized by a pair of numbers, a magnitude z, acting in a specific angle, theta, and vice versa. Rectangular format is especially well suited to perform the acts of addition and subtraction of complex numbers, whereas polar format is especially well suited to perform the acts of multiplication and division of complex numbers. The obvious problem with our relationship are those occasions in which we are presented complex numbers in rectangular format and asked to perform multiplication or division, or, equally as problematic, presented complex numbers in polar format and asked to perform addition and subtraction. While these techniques are possible, they're cumbersome and unwieldy. A far better means of performing these desired functions is to first convert the arguments into a format suiting the desired function and then performing the necessary actions. If the final answer must be expressed in a particular format, one can always reconvert as desired. Let's first consider the act of adding and subtracting complex numbers making use of polar format first. Polar format isn't well suited to the acts of addition and subtraction, so the easiest way of doing this is to first convert the numbers to rectangular format, then add or subtract them as necessary, and if the final answer must be expressed in polar format, reconvert the result in rectangular format back to polar. Allow me to demonstrate. Consider complex number A, represented in polar format as 9.0 at an angle of positive 24.3 degrees, and complex number B expressed in polar format as 9.6 at an angle of positive 153.4 degrees. We're being asked to perform the operation A plus B. When we convert A to rectangular format, we arrive at 8.2 plus j 3.7 as these operations illustrate. When we convert b to rectangular format, we arrive at negative 8.6 plus j 4.3 as these operation chains illustrate. With both complex numbers expressed in rectangular format, we are now free to add a and b together, keeping the real with the real and the imaginary with the imaginary. Doing so, we arrive at an answer negative 0.4 plus j 8. If we needed to express this answer in polar, we could do so with another conversion. Doing so yields 8.0 at an angle of 92.9 degrees. Note these rectangular coordinates place us in the second quadrant, and we should anticipate an angle between positive 90 and 180 degrees that necessitates active intervention on our part for the inverse tangent function. Does adding and subtracting complex numbers using polar format, including an intermediary rectangular conversion, take effort and organization on your part? Yes, yes it does. Is it hard? No, no it's not. It's the same techniques we've already performed, only done so in a specific sequence. In summary, to add or subtract complex numbers expressed in polar format, convert the complex numbers to rectangular format, add or subtract as necessary, then convert the result back to polar. Here's yet another illustrated example of manipulating complex numbers using polar format. Consider complex number A, expressed in polar as 3.1 at an angle of negative 110.8 degrees, and complex number B expressed in polar as 0.3 at an angle of negative 45 degrees. We're being asked to perform the operation A minus B. When we convert A to rectangular format, this results in negative 1.1 minus J 2.9 as these operations illustrate. When we convert B to rectangular format, we arrive at 0.2 minus J 0.2 as these operations illustrate. When we subtract B from A, we arrive at negative 1.3 minus J 2.7. If we need to, we can convert this final result to polar. Doing so yields 3.0 at an angle of 116.1 degrees. Note these given rectangular coordinates place us in the third quarter, and solving for the angle necessitates active intervention on our part. Let's put your understanding of adding and subtracting complex numbers using polar format to the test with these example problems. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. Given these arguments expressed in polar format, 
perform the necessary conversions and operations expressing your final answer in polar format. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For our first example problem, A expressed in rectangular format as 1.3 plus J 2.8, B is negative 2.4 minus J 7.4. When we add A and B together, it yields negative 1.1 minus J 4.6. Converted this result to polar results in 4.7 at an angle of negative 103.5 degrees. When we subtract B from A, it yields 3.7 plus J 10.2. Converting this result to polar yields 10.9 at an angle of 70 degrees. For our second example problem, A expressed in rectangular format is negative 3.7 plus J 2.1. B expressed using rectangular format is 7.8 minus J 6.1. When we add A and B together, it yields 4.1 minus J 4.0. Converting this result to polar yields 5.7 at an angle of negative 44.3 degrees. When we subtract B from A, it yields negative 11.5 plus J 8.2. Converting this result to polar yields 14.2 at an angle of 144.5 degrees. All right, hopefully you did well on that set. Let's now examine the act of multiplying and dividing complex numbers making use of rectangular format. Rectangular format isn't well suited for the acts of multiplication and division. So the easiest way of doing this is to first convert the numbers to polar format multiply or divide as necessary, and if the final answer must be expressed in rectangular format, reconvert the result in polar format back to rectangular. Allow me to demonstrate. Consider complex number A expressed in rectangular format as minus 3.2 plus J 0.6, and complex number B expressed in rectangular format as negative 3.5 minus J 4.7. We're being asked to perform the operation A times B. When we convert A to polar format, we arrive at 3.3 at an angle of 169.4 degrees. Note these rectangular coordinates place us in the second quadrant and necessitate active intervention on our part to arrive at the angle. When we convert B to polar format, we arrive at 5.9 at an angle of negative 126.7 degrees. Again, note since these rectangular coordinates place us inside the third quadrant, this necessitates active intervention on our part to arrive at a proper angle figure. When we multiply A and B together, essentially multiplying the magnitudes and adding the angles, it yields 19.1 at an angle of 42.7 degrees. If we need to, we can convert this result to rectangular. Doing so yields 14 plus J 12.9. Does multiplying and dividing complex numbers using rectangular format take effort and organization on your part? Yes, yes it does. Is it hard? No, no it's not. It's the same techniques we've already performed, only done so in a specific sequence. In summary, to multiply or divide complex numbers expressed in rectangular format, convert the complex numbers to polar format, multiply or divide them, then reconvert the result back to rectangular format. Here's another illustrated example of multiplying or dividing complex numbers using rectangular format. Consider complex number A expressed in rectangular format 6.9 plus J 5.0 and complex number B expressed in rectangular format as 5.7 minus J 0.3. We're being asked to perform the operation A divided by B. When we convert A to polar format, we arrive at 8.5 at an angle of 35.9 degrees as these operations illustrate. When we convert B to polar format, we arrive at 5.7 at an angle of negative three degrees. When we divide A by B, it results in 1.5 at an angle of 38.9 degrees. We now need to convert this result to rectangular. Doing so yields 1.2 plus J 0.9. Let's put your understanding of multiplying and dividing complex numbers using rectangular format to the test with these example problems. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. Given these arguments expressed in rectangular format, perform the necessary conversions and operations, and then express your final answer in rectangular format. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For our first example problem, A expressed using polar format is 11.3 at an angle of 30.9 degrees. B expressed using polar format is 7.2 at an angle of negative 116.2 degrees. When we multiply A times B, it yields 81.9 at an angle of negative 85.3 degrees. Converting this result to rectangular yields 6.7 minus J 
When we divide A by B, it yields 1.6 at an angle of 147.1 degrees. Converting this result to rectangular, it yields negative 1.3 plus J.8. For our second example problem, A expressed using polar format is 7.5 at an angle of 156.5 degrees. B expressed using polar format is 6.6 .6 at an angle of negative 90. Note this is all imaginary in the negative direction. When we multiply A times B, it yields 49.7 at an angle of 66.5 degrees. Converting this result to rectangular yields 19.8 plus J 45.5. When we divide A by B, it yields 1.1 at an angle of negative 113.5 degrees. When we convert this result to rectangular, it yields negative 0.5 minus J 1.0. Let's now examine additional math operations involving complex numbers. We'll start slow and pick up the pace and intensity as we move along. Let's first look at the means one uses to disassociate specific components of a complex number. Given complex numbers in either rectangular or polar format use a pair of numbers, the real and imaginary components in the case of rectangular and the magnitude and direction in the case of polar, one is often asked to determine only one of these components. This is the easiest of tasks if you're even the slightest bit organized and capable of converting between the formats. Consider complex number A expressed in rectangular format as 4.3 plus J 8.9. If we're being asked for the real component only, the answer is quite simply 4.3, because it is the horizontal real X component of the complex number A. Similarly, if we're asked for the imaginary component only, the answer is quite simply 8.9, because it is the vertical imaginary Y component of the complex number A. If, however, we're asked for the magnitude only, this necessitates a conversion. One determines the magnitude of the polar equivalent as the square root of the sum of the squares of the real x and imaginary y components. Substituting our given values, we would find a magnitude of roughly 9.9. .9. Finally, if we're asked for the angle only, this also necessitates a conversion. One determines the angle of the polar equivalent as the inverse tangent of the imaginary y over the real x. Substituting our given values, we find an angle of roughly 64.2 degrees. Don't make these disassociation actions hard. All they're asking to do is isolate specific components of complex numbers, real, imaginary, magnitude, or angle. The only time it ever gets even remotely hard is if you have to perform a conversion prior to solving for a specific component not present in the given format. Put your understanding of these tasks to the test with this set of example problems. Given a complex number in a particular format, determine the real, imaginary, magnitude, and angle components. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For our first example problem expressed in polar format as 6.6 .6 at an angle of 33.2 degrees, the real component is 5.5. Conversion is necessary because we're being asked to find a rectangular element of a complex number being expressed in polar. The imaginary component is 3.6. Similarly, conversion is necessary because we're being asked to find a rectangular element of a complex number being expressed in polar. Magnitude is 6.6. .6. No conversion is necessary since we were originally given polar format. All you got to do is be smart enough to figure out which one's the magnitude. The angle is 33.2 degrees. Similarly, no conversion is necessary since we were originally given polar format. All you got to do is be smart enough to figure out which one is the angle. By the way, it's the one with the degrees attached to it. For our second example problem, A expressed in rectangular format is 6.7 minus J 6.0. The real component is 6.7. No conversion is necessary since we're originally given rectangular format. All you got to do is be smart enough to figure out which one is the real component. By the way, it's the one without the J. The imaginary component is negative 6. No conversion is necessary since we're originally given rectangular format. All you got to do is be smart enough to figure out which is the imaginary component. It's the one with the J. The magnitude is 9.0. Conversion is necessary because we're being asked to find a polar element of a complex number being expressed in rectangular. Finally, the angle is negative 41.8 degrees. Similarly, conversion is necessary because we're being asked to find a polar element of a complex number being expressed in rectangular. Moving on, let's now examine negation and complex conjugation, two related but totally, totally different functions are often confused with each other. Let's first examine the negation of complex numbers using rectangular format first. 
Negation can be formed by multiplying a complex number expressed in rectangular format by negative 1, with the understanding that one must multiply the complete complex number by negative 1. This is most easily accomplished by enclosing the complex number using rectangular format in parentheses. Given complex number a using rectangular format is 3.9 plus j 5.9, the negation negative a is negative 3.9 minus j 5.9. When we illustrate both these complex numbers on a graph, a and negative a point in two totally opposite directions, as we'd expect. Let's now examine the negation of complex numbers using polar format. There are two methods of negating complex numbers using polar format. One, one can multiply the magnitude by negative one, keep the angle the same, or two, one can keep the magnitude the same and add or subtract 180 from the angle. Given complex number A using polar format is 3.7 at an angle 143.7 degrees, the negation negative A is either negative 3.7 at an angle of 143.7 degrees using the first method, or 3.7 at an angle of negative 36.3 degrees using the second method. While these are equivalent, the format 3.7 at an angle of negative 36.3 degrees is preferred since it makes it exceedingly obvious the magnitude is the same, only it's pointed in the opposite direction. Let's now examine the complex conjugate. For some reason, students historically struggle with this concept despite it being the simplest of tasks. If negation of complex numbers is to be likened to complete, totally opposite reversal, complex conjugation is to be likened to reflection. Don't make the complex conjugate hard. If given a complex number in rectangular format is x plus jy, the complex conjugate is x minus jy. If given a complex number in polar format is z at an angle theta, the complex conjugate is z at an angle of negative theta. Can you dig it? The complex conjugate is simply the reflection of the original complex number across the x-axis. For example, consider complex number a in rectangular format as 3.9 plus j 5.9. The complex conjugate of a, often symbolized as a star, is 3.9 minus j 5.9. The complex conjugate is a reflection of the original complex number across the x-axis. Let's try another example. Consider complex number A in polar format as 3.7 at an angle of 143.7 degrees. The complex conjugate A star is 3.7 at an angle of negative 143.7 degrees. Again, the complex conjugate is a reflection of the original complex number across the x-axis. Don't make the complex conjugate hard. Let's put your understanding of negation of the complex conjugate to the test with this set of example problems. Given a complex number in a particular format, determine the negation and complex conjugate in the original format. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For our first example problem, complex number A in rectangular format is 2.2 plus J 1.8. Negative A in rectangular format is negative 2.2 minus J 1.8. Negative A appears to be pointed in the opposite direction as A as we can expect. The complex conjugate of A in rectangular format is 2.2 minus J 1.8. The complex conjugate of A appears to be the reflection of A across the horizontal axis, as can be expected. For our second example problem, negative B in polar format is 10.9 at an angle of 150.8 degrees. As can be expected, negative B is pointed in the opposite direction as B. The complex conjugate of B expressed in polar format is 10.9 at an angle of positive 29.2 degrees. As can be expected, the complex conjugate of B appears to be a reflection of B across the horizontal axis. Moving on, let's wrap up our discussion of complex number math with a couple challenge problems. Given you're familiar with both rectangular and polar format, can perform conversions between rectangular and polar format and vice versa, are capable of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and now negating and forming the complex conjugate of complex numbers, as well as disassociating a complex number into its individual real, imaginary, magnitude, and angle components, you should be capable of rising to these challenges. But by no means are they a mindless task of merely using a formula as previously, but rather these tasks necessitate synthesis of all the above concepts to arrive at an answer. Challenge 1. 
Given a complex number known to be in the first quadrant with a magnitude of 6.2 and a real horizontal x component of 1.4, determine the imaginary y component and the angle. In this scenario, we've been given only partial information about the polar and partial information about the rectangular means of representing the same complex number. In the case of the rectangular representation, we've been given only the real component, but not the imaginary. In the case of the polar representation, we've been given the magnitude, but not the angle. Do you have what it takes to solve for the imaginary component and the angle? If you've got the level of understanding of complex numbers, conversion, and algebraic manipulation I expect you to possess, you should. If you feel you're up to the challenge, by all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Key to the solution of this problem is your understanding of conversion between rectangular and polar formats. Recall we've established four key formulas for the purpose of conversion. The real horizontal x component is the magnitude times the cosine of the angle theta. The imaginary vertical y component is the magnitude z times the sine of the angle theta. The magnitude z is the square root of the sum of the squares of the real and imaginary components. And finally, the angle theta is the inverse tangent of the imaginary over the real component with the understanding that angles in the first quadrant are from 0 to positive 90, angles in the second quadrant are from positive 90 to positive 180, angles in the fourth quadrant are from 0 to negative 90, and angles in the third quadrant are from negative 90 to negative 180. If you did not arrive at a solution previously, you should be able to now given it's right in front of you. If you are still missing it, I direct your attention to this formula here. The real horizontal x component is the magnitude z times the cosine of the angle theta. Given we know the magnitude z and the real component x of our given complex number, a logical handheld to begin our climb is the only conversion involving the magnitude and real component of our given number. Let's use our two knowns, the magnitude z and the real component x, to solve for our single unknown, the angle. Rearranging the conversion and taking the inverse cosine of both sides, we arrive at the angle equals the inverse cosine of the real component over the magnitude. Substituting our given values yields an angle of 76.9 degrees. Now what? We've got three knowns, the magnitude, the real component, and the angle, and one unknown, the imaginary component. If you can't figure out what to do, I direct your attention to this formula here. The imaginary vertical y component is the magnitude z times the sine of the angle theta. Substituting our known values of magnitude and angle yields an imaginary component of 6. Ta-da! Our given complex number can be expressed using rectangular format as 1.4 plus j 6.0 or using polar format as 6.2 at an angle of 76.9 degrees. Okay, it's your turn. This time you're on your own. By all means, Pause the lecture and try these by yourself. For our first example problem, we're given a complex number known to be in the fourth quadrant with a magnitude of 11.6 and a real component of 7.8. Solve for the angle and the vertical imaginary y component. Given we're in the fourth quadrant, it should be readily apparent that our resultant angle will be between 0 and negative 90 degrees and our resultant vertical imaginary y component will be negative. For a second example problem, we're given a complex number known to be in the first quadrant with a real component of 2.3 and a magnitude of 5.4. Given we're in the first quadrant, it should be readily apparent that our resultant angle will be between 0 and positive 90 degrees, and our vertical imaginary y component will be positive. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For our first example problem, the given complex number can be expressed using rectangular format as 7.8 minus j8.6, or using polar format as 11.6, at an angle of negative 47.7 degrees, as these operations illustrate. Note, since we know that we are in the fourth quadrant, it necessitates active intervention on our part to ensure our angles between 0 and negative 90 degrees, as we'd anticipate. For our second example problem, the given complex number can be expressed using rectangular format as 2.3 plus j4.9, or using polar format as 5.4, at an angle of 64.8 degrees. Hopefully you did well in this last set of example problems as these represent the synthesis of a number of the concepts we've thus far discussed. If you did well on these, you are on track. 
If you didn't do well, you are off track and need to get yourself back on track as soon as possible. By all means, rewind, revisit, or review any section you might be having difficulties with. We'll examine scientific calculators and complex numbers in later lectures that make some of these manual methods seem ponderous in comparison. However, your understanding of these basic concepts is still essential to manipulation and interpretation of complex numbers, especially when presented scenarios in which only partial information is available. In conclusion, this lecture presented math operations with complex numbers necessitating intermediate format conversion, isolation of individual complex number components, negation and complex conjugation of complex numbers, and determining individual complex number components given partial information. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.